Hey kids, welcome to a Unitube Lesson 6 Class Hierarchies Exercise Number 3. We have a choose your own adventure. Whichever one you pick, kids, the answer is almost identical. I'm going to do B, but again, whatever one you do, the answer is going to be very, very similar. Let's see what we have to do today, kids. The pie class represents a pie that is available at the Project Mercury's pastry food truck. Getting started, we're going to import the dessert.java class from our backpack. If not, we're just going to copy and paste the code there. In pie.java, we're going to refractor the pie class to be a subclass of dessert. Finally, in my console, we're going to instantiate or create a pie object. In kids, this lesson really focuses on this word right here, refractor. And what refractor means is to improve the code's readability, reusability, or structure of program code without altering its functionality. Essentially, it's tinkering a little, making it more efficient without actually changing the substance of the code. While we haven't talked about this much in our videos, in class, I've talked a lot about the dry method or don't repeat yourself. In coding, often if you find yourself repeating the same thing over and over, there's probably a more efficient way to do it. And that's the dry method. Don't repeat yourself. With that concept in mind and refractoring, we're going to change this code here so it's just a little more efficient. And really, it's not very hard. Let's get our dessert class first. So we're going to go to our backpack, dessert, and then import. Looking at the class here, this is what I've been writing through the entire unit so far. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to refractor the pi class to be a subclass of dessert. And that's not too hard. Let's go over to pi. And over here, how do we make it a subclass? Well, we've been doing this quite a bit. We are just going to extends dessert. And now pi is a subclass of dessert. That means we have to do a couple of other things here. And if you look, we already have private instance variables for flavor and price. That means we can get rid of them here. And I'm just going to do that with our old friend control question mark. And I'm just going to comment those out. Since we're extending, we have access to these private instance variables already. That means we can get rid of them here. That also means we can get rid of them down here. So we can do our control question mark, comment them out. Once I know the program will run, I'll come back and delete these kids. Our defaults, we will get from above. And then we have to come down here and do one more thing. Remember, we're getting private instance variables of flavor and price. And whenever we're doing that, we need our old friend super. And then we want to get access to new flavor from our dessert class and new price. Now dessert is our parent class and we can start sharing all of these things to our subclasses. And that's more efficient. We can have an overall dessert class. And within that, we can create pie objects, cookie objects, cake objects, ice cream objects, all kinds of dessert objects. And we have a little hierarchy to our code. It's more efficient. And we really didn't change the structure of it all. The pie class still works the same. It's just a subclass of dessert now. We're not done. We have to go over and instantiate a pi object. So we're just going to see if we have any spelling errors and see if the program is going to run. We haven't gotten to printing out our objects yet, but we will, kids. I'm going to come down here. How do we instantiate an object? Well, what class do we want? Pi. It's going to be called my pi. And it's going to be a new, and which constructor do we want to call? Well, let's just do our default now. We'll do pi, nothing like that. Then if we wanted to create an object, 
with a parameterized constructor, we could do my pi equal new pi. And we have four parameters, remember, flavor, price, filling, and has crust. Flavor, we will make apple. Price, we will set it to, we make good pie, so we'll charge $19.99. And our filling, well, it's an apple pie. So we should definitely do apples as our filling. And does it have a crust? Kids, I love a good crust. You know how I like my cookies burnt? I like my apple pies the same way. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. When I hit run, as long as I don't have any errors in spelling or the order of my parameters, Program should complete. Let's see if we're good, kids. Program completed just fine. In the next couple lessons, we're going to learn how to print this off and make sure we're double checking ourselves correctly. Key takeaways from this lesson, kids, is this idea of refractoring. And that's where we're improving the uh, readability, reusability, or structure of the program code without altering its functionality. In today's lesson, we did that by creating an overall dessert class with subclasses of different desserts, pies, cookies, cakes, whatever you want. It's important to understand these reasons why we refractor our code. It just makes it more efficient and that leads to our dry principle or don't repeat yourself. Part of encapsulation is this inheritance where subclass gets the attributes and behaviors of a superclass. And by using this principle, we made our code more efficient and we removed redundant code. So if we're gonna have a price and flavor for a pie and a dessert, we might as well share some of these attributes and behaviors. Hopefully kids, this lesson helped you understand refractoring code. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye.